Hello everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy. My name is Jagriti Sharma and I have qualified CSIR net thrice and these are my ranks for the December 18 exam, June 18 and December 17 exam. And today we are going to, uh, in the again we are uh, going to solve previous year questions. Okay, this is another video, this is part 2 of the previous year questions. We have, I've already done one video on this and we are studying UV visible spectroscopy. So yeah, let's start solving previous year questions and I hope that this class is going to be useful to the BSc and MSc students and also to the students who are who want to prepare for the CSIR net exam, gate chemistry, TIFR, bark aspirants as well as also IIT jam exam as well because this is a very basic uh, uh, topic, the UV visible spectroscopy and it's relatively easier as compared to the other spectroscopy chapters as well. Alright guys, so if you visit the unacademy.com, then if you type my name, Jagriti Sharma, then you will be able to uh, go get into my profile and you can follow me for regular updates. And guys, I would suggest you to watch the free courses that I have made because I have included a lot of previous year questions and also the concept, uh, you know, the lot of concepts of organic as well as inorganic chemistry as well, very exam related topics. And also I would suggest you to go and watch the special classes which are there if you have not already seen. These are live recorded classes. Okay, so alright, so you'll get a feel what are live classes and also there are a lot of previous year questions solved by me on a lot of topics. So definitely I would suggest you to go and watch them. It will be very very helpful to you for your preparation and if you like the uh, special classes, if you like the content and if you want to subscribe then you can use my code Jagriti S and it is, it is going to fetch you a 10% discount on any of the subscription package that you want to have. Alright, so yes, let's now start solving questions, the previous year questions. So the first question that we have today is from CSI UGC net exam 2012 July uh, June. Okay, so this question is asking phosphorescence is represented as so basically guys this question is based on Jablonski diagram okay so this question is based on Jablonski diagram and I hope that you have read about it what is the Jablonski diagram and if not then let us discuss it in detail so basically if we are having uh, yeah this is our Jablonski diagram and basically this is energy and this is the spin state that we have to so basically S0 or S0 is the uh, singlet uh, ground uh, spin state and as we move forward this is our uh, you know the singlet states are increasing in energy and this one T1 is our triplet uh, state okay so what happens is whenever we excite an electron from a singlet state let's say to another uh, excited singlet state then what is the possible fate of the electron? What are the possible uh, you know, processes that can happen to that electron are given by a Jablonski diagram? Okay, so let's say the excited electron has now gone into spin state 2. Now, it must have absorbed some energy and that energy is given by H nu A, which is the energy absorbed. Okay, now what can happen with that electron? the electron can fall to a lower energy spin state yes it can fall to s1 or it can also fall to s0 but it cannot directly fall to s0 so first it has to come to s1 now it emits or let's say it releases some heat and that is called internal conversion this ic is internal conversion and it is basically a heat emission all right now after coming to this uh, first excited state which is S1 again there are a lot of possibilities so one simple possibility is again IC or the internal conversion of heat by which it is radiating energy in the form of heat the other possibility is that the energy is radiated in the form of light and whenever the transition S1 to S0 is taking place and it is emitting light then the process is called fluorescence okay so this process is fluorescence and the energy which is released is the fluorescent light energy okay another uh, possibility is that the electron may convert and actually it can actually 
you know, uh, go from the singlet excited state to the triplet excited state, which is lower in energy. So the triplet excited state over here is lower in energy from the singlet excited state. All right, because in the triplet excited state, the electrons are having maximum uh, spin and uh, they don't have to be, you know, no stay in one. Uh, let's say what we what we usually uh, write is like this that the electrons now here is singlet and the electron over here is a triplet basically so here it is much happier because because there is less uh, hindrance less electron electron uh, repulsion and so on they are free to occupy different uh, spaces all right so there is less energy required in this so triplet state is much more stable than the singlet state all right now this process of jumping up from the singlet state to the triplet state of lower energy is called inter-system crossing which is represented by ISC okay all right then again when it comes to triplet state either it can lose energy in the form of heat to give internal conversion or it can radiate energy in the form of light and that light now will be called the fluorescent light or, or, or sorry the phosphorescent light and it is a phosphorescence energy which is represented by h nu within bracket p so these are the possible uh, fate of an electron which uh, gets excited to a higher uh, you know spin state okay so now the question was asking what is the transition for phosphorescence to take place so as we can see very clearly the uh, transition is from t1 to s0 all right I hope that now it is clear to everyone. So the transition is T1 to S0. Okay, so it is there in A and B. So our C and D are wrong. But here in option number B, T1 to S0 with releasing of heat. So it is not heat because if it is heat, it would be inter internal conversion. It is light, H nu, photons. Okay, so that is why answer uh, option A is the correct answer. All right, let's now move on to another question. So this question was asked in CSIR UGC net 2013 June. So basically, as you can see, they have given you some uh, wavelength and they are asking that which of the following is going to have this particular wavelength. You can now very easily say that this is, we have to calculate the lambda max from the Woodward Fisher rules that we have already studied in another video. Okay. The question is asking, in this UV visible spectrum, a diterpenoid exhibited a lambda max at 275 nanometer. Okay. The compound among the choices given below is, so now you cannot remember that which diterpenoid is giving this value, so you have to calculate. Now, first of all, uh, the thing is that you have to uh, take your compound to 275 nanometer. And for that, you have to select the, uh, you know, the diene either it is a homonuclear or a heteronuclear so if you look at a this is our heteronuclear diene and the heteronuclear diene usually has 214 nanometer this is not a conjugated diene so b is definitely not the answer c in option number c okay so this is one single bond all right this there was some printing mistake so this is our homonuclear diene and the value is 253 nanometer then we have again heteronuclear diene so this is again heteronuclear diene 214 so guys if you want to take the value close to 275 you must take homo which has the value 253 okay and let's see if it is possible let us take this option number c first for uh, calculation all right so if we have homonuclear uh, diene like this 253 is a base value then let us see the ring residues the ring residues are very clearly given over here. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So there are 3 ring residues. 5 into 3 is going to give us 15. And also, if you uh, look at this uh, ring over here, then you will be very easily able to see that this bond over here is actually the exocyclic bond to this central ring. So there is one exocyclic bond as well. And if you calculate the total, we are going to get 273 nanometer, which is very, very close to 275, which is observed or exhibited basically. So it is the lambda observed value. All right. And this is our calculated value. 
so we can see that on taking option number C we are getting close to 275 let's also see A and D so guys in the option number A we have taken 214 D also we have taken 214 what are the other options let's see <clears throat> to this uh, cycle to this uh, cyclic ring this one becomes the exo bond alright so there is one exo bond so let's add 5 for it how many ring residues 1 2 3 and 4 4 into 5 is 20 so 20 ring residues and nothing else we can see as such so what we are going to do is we are just going to add uh, this is 3 this is 239 we are getting let's add here also so this is our 214 and to this ring this one becomes the exocyclic bond and to this ring this one becomes the exocyclic bond so let's say 5 into 2 10 for exocyclic bonds the uh, yeah these are the ring residues we can say okay and these are the two alkyl groups so how many 1 2 3 4 and 5 so 5 into 5 is 25 so let's try to add all of them Still we are getting 249 uh, nanometer. Alright, so again D and A are not the answer. Option C is the correct answer. I hope that by all this calculation you are much clearer on the answer and also try to uh, calculate this yourself as well. Alright, so let us see another question. which uh, This question was asked in CSIR UGC net exam 2018 June. Okay, this is a very recent question then. Alright. Consider the nature of solvents in column 1 and corresponding lambda max for iodine in various solvents given in column 2. So basically in this uh, question we are given that iodine uh, there is uh, you know there is iodine in the mixture and there are solvents in the mixture. So whenever there is iodine in solvents we must think about the charge transfer spectra of iodine. Okay. So the in the last previous year uh, question video also we had talked about such a question and this concept got repeated in 2018 again guys. So about the charge transfer spectra of iodine what we can say is that the energy splitting or the energy value increases as the interaction of some uh, solvent increases with iodine which means it is a strong donor. So some uh, solvent or some ligand which is a strong donor to iodine is definitely going to create a lot of splitting and it is a lot of splitting which means the uh, yeah so it is going to create a lot of uh, splitting all right <clears throat> all right so let's see what can be the perfect match so guys if iodine in the vapor form is 520 nanometer okay and if we compare these values then we are getting 520 in some in one of the options so let's see what can be the perfect uh, you know um, option over here a non donor a weak donor a strong donor or a pi electron donor so guys if it is a non donor then iodine may be in the vapor phase or iodine may be in a solution does not matter yes because the solvent is non donor only so we can say that A is going to have the first value 520. So A is not going to cause any change in the U visible spectrum because it is a non-donor. All right. Then what we go, what we can see is that let's say we see the lambda max, which is the least 360 nanometer, which means 360 nanometer, which means the lab, uh, the energy must be very very high. This energy is the highest, isn't it? So the energy gap is the highest for a strong donor. So we can very easily say that the fourth one is going to be a strong donor C. Okay, so let's see where is C4. So in only one option there is C given 4. So this is making the answer very easy to be, you know, ticked off. Okay, so we can say A is 1 and C is 4. So guys, what we just do is we just crack the answer by answering only two uh, options okay so a is going to have option number one which is very obvious and c is going to have option number four this is also very very obvious okay are we having another another this possibility in another option no we are not having this possibility in any other option okay let us also see that these two options do they justify let's see 
so they are saying B is getting option number three. Weak donor is giving four fifty, and pi donor is giving five hundred. So basically, guys, the pi electron donor, and they are talking about weak sigma donor over here. So when they are talking about weak sigma donor, which is actually uh it is not a negative charge species like this okay so weak sigma donor is going to have a lesser value than the pi electron donor all right it is going to have a lesser uh, let's say yeah so that is why what we can say is the pi electron donor has the lambda max this much and the weak electron donor is going to have a lambda max of 450 because the weak electron donor is basically a weak sigma electron donor all right whenever it is not given it is a weak sigma electron donor only so it is still much more better than the pi electron donor in causing the splitting okay so that is why what we can say is the 450 nanometer is actually a greater splitting than the 500 nanometer and it is done by a weak sigma electron donor so basically this is much better than pi electron donor for causing the splitting all right i hope that you are clear and option number c is the correct answer if i just mark a b c and d option c is the correct answer all right so yes guys if you were able to understand anything from the video if you are able to take back any knowledge from the video then please like share and subscribe and yes we am i'm going to uh, up next i am going to upload the videos on ir spectroscopy all right definitely the concepts and the previous year solved questions as well okay thank you so much for watching and keep learning